So I'm going to give a pretty short presentation just um, about Nordic. I don't know if you know, probably know, all of them know about us. And it doesn't work. <laughs> there we go. So let's talk about javelins. Um, everyone know, knows about Nordic sport javelins, yeah? How many of you uh, use them all the time? Oh, most majority, nice. Uh, we have produced javelins since uh, the 50s, actually. And uh, that's 70 years. So we're going to celebrate next year 70 years, Mark. Um, actually, we were the first one to produce steel javelin, same time as Dick Hell did the aluminum javelin, if you know, remember that one. Uh, our name was Sandvik Javelins in the beginning, uh, before we became Nordic. So usually in the, in Canada and US, they still actually sell <laughs> say Sandvik. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that, that's the only one. That, because in the marketing, when I go to US and I see everyone still says Sandvik, Sandvik, Sandvik. It's just when it, the guy before talked about their memories and so on, they still hang out there. <laughs> I don't know why, but. <laughs> but in 72, we changed the name for Nordic Sport. That's about soon 50 years ago, Canadians. <laughs> so, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, catch up. <laughs> but in 98, we introduced the carbon ones. And um, we were the first ones, and we are still doing, we're the only ones still doing 100% carbon javelins. Everyone else doing the composites. It's a blend between aluminum and carbon. Uh, but we use the pure ones. Since 2012, we introduced the flex system to the javelins. We played replacing the doll system, the meter system. Um, many people still use it um, to referring to the javelin as an 85 meter javelin, 90 meter javelin, 60 meter javelin and so on. But we were feeling that it's a stupid system because we manufacturers said 85 meter on the lady javelins. And you can still see on other manufacturers, they say 85 meter for a 600 gram javelin. But what is the world record? Is it over 80? No. Did it reach 75? No. So why do you say 85 meter? Is it going to fly 85 meter? Sorry? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, maybe. Thomas, do you say 685? Possible? <laughs> yeah, it's po we can go try. <laughs> no, but... Um, we were thinking about it and we were like, because, but we, we got a little bit pissed because in 2010, one of our competitors received a, received, uh, released a 100 meter javelin. And we were like, mm, come on, man, like a 100 meter, who's going to throw that? <laughs> Maybe 80. Um, so we will start talking about it. So what, what the athletes are really talking about, like when they, they try javelins and they throw javelins. Most of them are talking about the stiffer javelins and the softer javelins. That's most athletes are thinking like, for training, I'm going to take a softer javelin. Uh, for a competition, I'm going to take a little bit more stiffer javelin. Um, and we found out that the stiffer javelin is actually flying much, much, much better in air. Uh, there's less vibration in air. So the stiffer javelin is the perfect flying conditions. They can hit 100 meter easy through a cannon. <laughs> That's a different story. Um, so as stiffer as you go, the less friction there is. So we'll start talking about, let's introduce some system. And we looked at the pole vault. And then they have a system for flex. But the flex is there, how much is the pole is bending depending on the weight of the athlete, more or less. So um, yeah. Sorry, because I, I'm sorry, I cannot see what I'm going to talk about, so but I'm a little bit off now. But um, the Steve Javelin, the problem with the Steve Javelin is that it actually can harm you a lot for the athlete. And um, most of you probably know that you get injuries in the arm and everything else. But um, we usually say that the carbon javelins should be avoided during the training. Uh, usually use the aluminum ones for the training because you can get the, the body going and if you train too much with the carbon, um, like Kim did two years ago, unfortunately, you got some damage. Um, we made some graph 
uh, and I want to show you is to explain a little bit the flex system. And we go with the meter system about what is the athlete's capacity. So if the athlete can throw 85 meter, this is the javelins he should use. Because these javelins actually can fly up to 100 in a cannon, theoretically. Um, these javelins, a little bit less stiffer, a softer, and they can go to 85, and so on and so on. So the stiffness, or we say the forgiveness of the javelin, are the softer it is, the more forgiving the javelin is, the less it goes. Uh, this available um, on our web page, so you can actually see that one, uh, both for 600 and uh, 800. So, choose the right flex for the javelin, uh, for the athlete uh, during the competition and uh, for the training. Um, as I said before, we don't recommend at all to use our carbons for the training ones. Maybe sometimes a little bit Thomas is always using actually the carbons for the training, but <laughs> no, no, yeah, sometimes you do aluminum, yeah, or champion steel, you know. Um, in 2016, we started to experiment actually with a new carbon material and a little bit different technique. And we launched a new javelin called Hera Carbon. And um, it's been pretty successful actually this year. Unfortunately, not as much used because we were a little bit too late to release it two days before Amsterdam. Uh, but we got some throws in Amsterdam and actually some pretty good results with it. In Rio, it wasn't used at all because nobody realized it didn't want to try it. I don't know why, but it was standing all the time on the, on the box. But um, our Swedish girl uh, beat the Finnish team in Javelin with it here in Tampere. So it was pretty fun, actually. <laughs> and Kimam beat actually Finnish for the first time in 28 years. Was it 28? Yeah. Uh, so it was pretty fun, actually. Finnish people are a little bit pissed about it. Um, so next year we will introduce actually 800 gram javelin based on the Hera carbon. And the guy who will be our guinea pig sitting over there, <laughs> he's going to test it. I'm going to talk to you later. <laughs> um, it's, it's, I'm going to give you a little bit before we're going to talk more about it later, um, next year, but what we're doing is that we're looking at the, at the carbon material and the painting of the javelin. And also a little bit on the tip. Uh, we're looking at aerodynamics a lot, how the airplanes, airplanes working and so on. Um, and theoretically the results are pretty good and we can hit the 100 mark. Or Thomas can hit the 100 mark with it, actually. But let's see, let's try. <laughs> And see what happens. But see what. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let's try first, and then. No, the funny. The other thing is IWF also. They need to approve it. So let's see what they say. So thank you. That's short. You can go for dinner. <laughs> oh wait, I forgot. I forgot one thing uh, intentionally. Uh, a small competition for everyone. You can win any Nordic equipment worth of 1,500 euro. Just go to that website, answer some questions. If they're right, I will get an email, and one person who has the most right answers will get that prize. Uh, you can try once <laughs> on one email. So if you have many email accounts, you can try a lot. So guys, uh, you can get some training javelins, some carbon ones, and so on. So have fun. <laughs>